slums, the relics of a long forgotten industrial revolution, but still hanging on like a bad taste left in the mouth. In the last 20 years, we've seen massive redevelopment programs, but the problem is still far from over. If we take Manchester as an example, there are over 18,000 homes officially declared unfit to live in, but still waiting to be demolished. Add to that another 1,200 just waiting to be declared unfit. The clearance process is a tortuous pipeline. Inquiries, ministerial decisions, and at the end of it, the big problem. If you're going to pull someone out of a house and pull it down, you've got to build them somewhere else to go and live in. In recent years, building has slowed drastically. The pipeline has got blocked, and people remain stuck in places like this. So much for the houses you can't live in. Now what about the houses you can't even afford to buy? Today, even a really basic cheap house will still cost you £5,000. What's more, building societies often don't lend on that sort of property. If we look at the average British house, today that costs £10,000. It's doubled in five years. To buy the average British house, you have to be earning more than £75 a week. As costs rise, council tenants haven't got off lightly either. They've had statutory rent increases, up 92 pence in October 1972, and a further 54 pence in October 73. Housing and land then is a vital issue for Britain in 1974, all the way from the dirty backyards of the slum dweller to the bulging pockets of the property speculator. We took three representatives of the major parties out into Manchester's housing wilderness. Gordon Bailey, the Liberal Party's northwestern organiser. Graham Page, Conservative candidate for Crosby and until last week Minister of Local Government and Development. And Frank Lorne, Labour candidate for Salford East. I put the same question to all three of them. What solution is your party offering to these problems? Well, more new houses and new flats like these we've got around us here. Uh, and we haven't done badly on that, you know. We've met the great demand of the owner-occupier in particular for the uh, new houses. And then we want to concentrate on the improvements to the older houses, save the older houses, not just bulldoze them down, but uh, concentrate on improvements. And there we're proposing housing action areas where the local authority will be compelled to carry out uh, improvements. Uh, and that's mainly the, the, the main points of our programme. Are you offering anything to try and bring down the cost of housing on the level of mortgages? We've met the demand by the owner-occupiers. You know, there are a million new owner-occupiers in the last three years, so we've met the demand pretty well for those. Uh, we've got new agreements with the building societies for first-time purchasers, which I think will help a lot. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lorne, now, can I ask you, sir, what solutions are the Labour Party offering? The way to, build more, uh, to solve the tragic housing problem is to build more houses. And this Conservative government's record is really disastrous. They're building fewer than have been built for 14 years and fewer council houses, on which most working people depend, the fewest for 21 years. How are you going to build more houses? By spending more of the country's resources on houses and less on other things. We need improvements, but in addition to new houses and not in substitution. And one other thing about the rents. These council houses, under the government's Housing Finance Act, have already had two increases, deliberate increases in rents, and there are more to come. Well, we are going to repeal this act, and certainly this year's uh, rent increases will be scrapped. In addition, we're going to take over building land at its existing use value, and not at the extortionate price you have to pay once building permission is given to build on land so that potato fields turn into gold mines overnight. Thank you, Mr. Lorne. OK, Mr. Bailey, the Liberal Party, what are they offering in the housing question? Well, let us face it, no government ever builds houses. The, point, the more important point is to provide the finance enabled the house building industry to build the houses. And there are two things here. I believe that local authorities should be able to buy, um, borrow money on the same terms as building societies when it comes to private enterprise, then again, you've got to ha provide sufficient money and you've got to see that the building societies have sufficient long-term loans. They borrow short. They've got to borrow long in, in the future by special arrangements. And then secondly, you've got to make quite sure that the, if people cannot afford the house, they can buy the equity in the house. Now, this is where you, you don't have to have to take out the full mortgage. Somebody else, like the building society, can take out an equity which you can subsequently purchase. This will bring homes much more in the, into the uh, area of all those people who are low-income groups at the moment who want to buy their own houses. 
These are the two major points.